Four Flamingos is one of Orlando's exciting new restaurants and a newly named Michelin Guide recommendation. Its subtitle is a Richard Blaze Florida Kitchen, and I recently spoke to the celebrity chef at the restaurant where he explained a little bit about the concept and promised to have his chef de cuisine, Shelby Farrell, show me how to make the signature swordfish dish, which was one of my favorites. All right, hey everyone, I'm Richard Blaze, and I am the chef co-creator of Four Flamingos in Orlando, Florida. I mean, Florida has a strong connection with me. Um, my, my wife is from Florida, she's a gator. Her whole family uh, lives in the state. Uh, and I have very fond memories as a child of traveling to Florida from New York on vacations. And a lot of my early memories of Florida are sort of found in, the, in Florida Flamingos, right? So it's like, you know, fish with citrus butter and uh, fresh seafood. And a lot of the things that we think of when we think of iconic Florida, even when it goes into the name, of course, the flamingo, the iconic, uh, you know, animal of Florida. So uh, a lot of memories, a lot of people think that my food is uh, ultra creative, um, but uh, most of my dishes start with sort of a look towards the past, and that's what we're doing here at this restaurant. There is no flamingo, this has come up now, and no, there is no flamingo on the menu, but of course, when you name a restaurant, you have to do a deep dive Figuring out, you know, you learn a lot about flamingos. As an example, why are we four flamingos? Well, there are four species of flamingos in the United States, Central, South America, and the Caribbean. So that's why we're four flamingos. And also that four people came up with the name. Um, but yes, in my research, I did find that there are ancient Roman recipes for eating flamingo, usually at extravagant uh, galas and, and, fe and, and festive moments. But there are no flamingos on the menu here. I will say we have a bone-in seafood program here, um, sort of like a, you know, like a steakhouse but for seafood. So we have a bone-in swordfish and a tuna chop that's on the menu right now. Uh, and those things are pretty special to me because we've really just cut the fish in a different way. It's kind of a classical preparation. The swordfish is a riff off of um, blackened fish that you might have in New Orleans. Uh, but we use black lime, a really, really interesting ingredient, Persian lime. Uh, so I would say the swordfish has been, and honestly, the surprise hit of the restaurant. Uh, I have it on the menu at my restaurant on the West Coast. We don't sell as many. People on the East Coast really know what swordfish is and it has become our number one selling item here. I think we're gonna see it right now. Chef Shelby's preparing it. Let's go check it out. Today we're gonna be making the Four Flamingos signature black lime coated swordfish. It's gonna be a center cut, bone in, beautiful swordfish steak. We get them caught fresh right off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. Beautiful piece of fish, doesn't need a whole lot. We're gonna take it liber liberally season with kosher salt. And then we're gonna coat it in a mixture of black lime powder. That's gonna be just a Persian lime that's been dehydrated in the sun, turns naturally black while it oxidizes. Three parts black lime powder, two parts granulated garlic, and one part ground black pepper coat it all over, form a nice beautiful crust. The seasoning is zesty, peppery, and fresh. Just enough flavor to accentuate the swordfish without masking it. I'm going to take a little bit of melted clarified butter, but olive oil or canola works as well. Liberally coat your pan and get that just shy of smoking hot. Alrighty. Shake off that extra seasoning and go for a dip. Swirling the fish around will help it stop it from sticking to the pan. We like to sear ours in cast iron, but a non-stick will work just fine. You'll know it's ready to flip when it naturally releases from the pan. Alrighty. These are looking good to go. Oh yeah. That hard sear on both sides is going to help 
lock in all that moisture in the swordfish and keep it beautiful and succulent. Once we've flipped our swordfish, we're just gonna pop it into a 500 degree oven and finish it off in there. Cook it to 130 to 140 degrees, depending on your preference. All right, we're gonna serve this with just a little bit of simply charred broccolini. Asparagus or some bitter green, like a collard, would be nice as well. A little olive oil, salt and pepper is all it needs. If you don't feel like firing up the grill, broiler works fine as well. About 30 seconds on both sides just to get a nice hard char. Uh, we lightly blanched this beforehand so it cooks up nice and fast. Alrighty. Alrighty, about 15, 20 minutes in the oven, depending on the thickness of your steak. And you are ready to rock. Nice golden brown sear all over. Just kinda pull this beautiful swordfish. And set it to the side while we make a nice simple pan sauce. To the side, okay. All right, so we're gonna heat this pan back up. You see, we've got that beautiful fond left over from the swordfish. Set to that pan, we're gonna add a little bit of minced garlic, minced shallot. You don't wanna get much color. Add that and some whole butter. We're just going to cook this until our butter becomes browned. You'll know when it's ready when it starts to smell toasty, almost like popcorn. Alrighty. Our butter's got some beautiful smell to it. Start to see all the milk solids on top, showing a little bit of color. Cut that heat to this beautiful butter shallot pan sauce. We're gonna add just a spritz of fresh lemon juice. Fresh chopped parsley and chives. And that's our pan sauce. Alrighty, your swordfish is cooked, your broccolini charred, a little bit of pan sauce, and we are ready to plate. Swordfish, veg, Our lovely roasty, toasty pan sauce. Let's drizzle that all over. Half a lemon, some garnished salt, fresh parsley, and you're done. <laughs>